I love to be here, and I feel God when I come to these conferences. I feel God all over. Isn't that the heart of God that he loves all nations, and he causes us to love each other beyond our ethnic group? Of course, he has a special plan for Israel, and we pray for Israel, but we know that he loves all nations. He, he loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that he desires that all to be saved. When I had, uh, uh, I've had Brother Joel Rosenberg on the live broadcast many times, and I so, get so excited when he's there, because I say, this is Jesus. Look at him. He... Of course, he's called for, for the ministry he does. He loves Israel and he stands for it. But look at him. He has a love, not just for the Jews, but for Muslims. And look at me, a Muslim born and came to Christ. And not only I love my people and I love Muslims to come to Christ, I love Israel. I love the Jews and I want them to, to find the Lord that changed my life. I'm going to share about my testimony, and not just my salvation, because the work of God does not just finish when you're saved. Actually, it, it starts. Amen? Amen? Yeah, so I was, uh, this is not me. The first two pictures, just I found, I found a <laughs> picture that I felt, I felt that's me, okay? Uh, I, I don't have pictures of me that, that young, but I, that, that was pretty much me. When I was young, I was... Uh, a uh, very dedicated Muslim, and I tried to follow Islam the best I could. Um, but when I got into teenage years, uh, I felt, okay, I'm doing it, but, you know, it's not doing anything for me. He, I'm doing all the rituals and praying and fasting, but uh, where is God? I don't have a relationship with him, and it, it doesn't change. It doesn't have, give me peace, joy, or it doesn't affect my relationships. So I said, I'm going to focus on studies. I'm going to focus on getting degrees. And I put God in the background. I said, these rituals are empty. I just be a good person. Be a good Muslim, and don't, you don't need to do, do those things. And that's what the time of revolution. And like many other students at, um, in my college, in my university in Iran, we, we, we were involved in, in student movement, in overthrowing Shah. We felt that this is what we need to do, uh, that... Uh, and Islam was, was one way to gather all of us to, to do that. So the Shah fell, and that, those are pictures of that time. And I met this a beautiful American lady in Iran. Her name is Donnell. She's young, brave. You know, at 1920, she was in Iran working. And so we, we, we got married. She became a Muslim. And uh, she was converted, uh, she was a nominal Christian, converted to Islam, and we got, we got married. Now, right after our marriage, we went on streets together in 79, and here is an American lady with me on the streets of Tehran shouting, death to America. Of course, we have repented since then, and we, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we sing... <laughs> God does transformation. <laughs> Khomeini came back, and when he came back, when I saw, uh, you know, that, that, that's when I was at USC, when he came back, I came to Southern California to get my graduate degrees, and he came back, and here I started thinking. I said, you know, I'm, I'm getting my degrees, and I'm getting to, uh, to get my dreams I, of my childhood to come to U.S., get a graduate degree, get a good job. But life is empty. And look at what Islam is doing. That's what the hostage crisis, I said, look, this Islam is defeating superpower USA, and USA cannot do anything. So the truth must be in Islam. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I should look at Islam one more time. And if it's true, I need to dedicate my life to it. I had a struggle, which is a struggle of millions of people right now, the young people in Iran, asking the same question I'm asking right now, which is, is Islam true or not? Because internally, it's not true. Where is God? I follow these things. Where is God? Where is change? Where is hope? Where is joy? Where is peace? Where is that relationship in my family? It, it doesn't affect anything. It just follow a, certain rituals. So I, I said, I'm going to study one more time the Quran. And, I, and if God is there, I'm going to dedicate me, my life in serving Islam. And I did that. I studied Quran, even though I knew a lot about it. But this time, just carefully, like objectively, finished Quran. I said, I'm still empty. Maybe there is no God. Maybe they just made him up. Because 
I, I just, maybe I should continue. I accept that God is, that life is empty and then you die. I mean, that's, be brave, accept that. But he said, no, they say God has written other books. And I'm a researcher, let me read other books and then decide. I don't think I'm going to find anything new, but let me try. I got a Bible, and uh, I studied the Bible, and the more I read, especially Matthew, I realized uh, this Jesus is not what they told me, that he's a prophet. So I struggled for a few months of who is this Jesus, and the more I studied, before that I felt all religions are the same, and if you really study them, they all converge. But the more I studied Quran and, and the Bible, they diverged. They diverged, and I had more and more questions. So I started going to a church. My, me and my wife, you recognize that, huh? Church of the Open Door downtown Los Angeles, where J. Vernon McGee was the previous pastor. My wife came to Christ the first week, and I saw a change in her, and I was struggling. Is this true or not? It was just mental. It was just questions. When, when I saw the change in my supernatural change in my wife so fast within a week within days i said this must be true so i made the same decision i came to christ and my life changed what i wanted all my life the presence of god the peace joy the relationship with god and relationship with my wife that we were about to get divorced it was healed and we cancel our divorce. Said, this thing, this Jesus, this message of the gospel really works. I'm an engineer. I'm looking for things that work, not just nice words. So here is something so powerful. And I felt it's selfish to keep it to ourselves. And I love that Marty song, for Zion's sake, I will not be silent. That, that was me. I cannot be silent. Even though an introvert, an engineer, a shy person, I said, I have to share that. I started sharing the gospel with others. And I was at that time that my youngest brother, 16-year-old, was arrested in Iraq. He was politically active, minor activities. And they arrested him. They kept him for two years. They told my mom, oh, we're gonna, he's okay. We're going we're gonna to set him free. He's, he's doing fine. And one day when he turned 18, they called my mom and said, come and get his body. They, they killed him. So I was a new believer, just uh, fell on my face, said, God, what happened here? What do I need to do? They, they killed my brother. What do I, how do I respond to this? I'm angry. I want to take revenge. And of course, God says, no, you can't get take revenge. Revenge is mine. Oh, yeah, 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 God, I, I, I remember reading that. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> but I hate them. I hate them. I'm angry at them. Oh, yeah. You say you cannot hate, and if you're angry in your heart, you, you've killed them. Oh, my gosh. What kind of faith I have? I can't even be angry, but what do I do with this thing? Can I at least, Lord, can I at least cuss at, at them, you know? I, no. <laughs> said, no. What do I need to do? Love them. That was the message. And the Lord, those three days, I just felt, said, you don't, they are not your enemies. Your enemy is this, is Satan that using a religion to not bring, only bring them to, to hell, but cause others. So you have that one enemy. And you want to take revenge? Yes, Lord, I want to take revenge of, of Satan. I understand that they are just victims like me. So what do I need to do? And he said, the best way to take revenge of Satan is to evangelize. He hates it. So that's when I dedicated my life. I said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, share the gospel with uh, others and started house churches in uh, Southern California. And uh, I failed. I gathered people like that. And they came to 10, 12, one or two people came to Christ, but they just dissolved. I failed and failed and failed for seven years. Over seven times, I tried to start a house church, and I failed. It was after graduation I went to Northern California. One thing I learned is that I can't do it. I can't start a church. I need God first, of course, and I need others. And in Northern California, San Jose, Silicon Valley, the Lord gave me a few faithful people, and together we planted churches in Northern California, and that, that's one of our church. One thing I want to share with you, it's, it's God's favor, you know, I shared the gospel over the air, and I don't know why. I, now I found a word for it. I don't know why people of Iran like me. And I, of course, the message is powerful, but they want to hear it from me. And I found a word for it. I said, that's not me. That's favor of God. And I found the definition of favor of God. Favor of God is when people like you, and you don't know why. So, 
<laughs> so share the gospel over the airs, and people respond, uh, respond to it. He's a Muslim, not just Christians. I've had so many Muslims call and say, well, we love what you're, what you're doing. I remember this clergy call after a program. This clergy said, you know, uh, I said, who, uh, he said, I'm a top clergy. I said, I'm so excited. Are you watching? He said, wait, wait, uh, who, who are you? I said, I, he said, I cannot tell you because if I'm so famous, if I tell you, you know me. I cannot tell you my name. But I'm watching your programs and I admire you. You are, you are killing us softly. He, there is a Farsi phrase that says, you're cutting our heads with a cotton blade. That's what he said. And I love that message. And I believe that was a Nicodemus. So Muslims just watch it and they love, they want to sit and, and continue to, to, to watch it. It was after September 11 where I said, this thing is urgent. Muslims are invading. We need to do something. And that was when the Lord opened up a satellite television right after September 11. And the beauty of satellite that I'm mostly involved and helping the underground churches is that satellite goes over mullah's head into people's homes. You know, they cannot, <laughs> they cannot stop it. They arrest people. They, they cannot, the churches are closed. You know, underground church leaders have been arrested. But people lock the door, turn on television, and they're so hungry. Iran is an open, uh, there is an open heaven in Iran. And satellite is so popular in Iran. Look at that. Can you see that? Satellite television. By the way, satellite, having satellite is illegal in Iran. It is a God, <laughs> God abiding, law abiding citizens of Iran. Sometimes I feel, I feel the satellite dish is a national flower of Iran. You know, it's a, <laughs> you see, everyone has it. <laughs> So to wrap it up, here, it, nom nomads have it, but I want to, <laughs> people of Iran are ready to come to Christ, and these are the enemies of the Jews. What I believe is God right now is extending its grace to Iranians. They have rejected Islam. Iran has the fastest growing evangelical population in the world, and it's not me saying it. It's not me. I remember... One time I was on an air, uh, airplane and I was sitting by a Jew and uh, we, we talked and I asked him how to, what you do and of course he asked me, what do you do? He said, you know, my job is to turn your enemies to be your friends. So what are you doing? I'm a pastor and I, of course that was an open door to share but I believe God wants us to share the gospel with our enemies. In the Old Testament, God wanted Israel to be a light to the nations and they failed and that's why they sent Assyrians and Babylonians and I believe He's calling us in the West, in America, to do the same. And if we don't, September 11 or worse could happen. We need to get out. He wants us to share the gospel, love the Jews, love the enemies of the Jews. That's the only answer we have for the Muslims. Thank you for listening. Let me pray. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for your power, Lord, the power of the gospel that can change not just lives, but change a nation. Thank you for hand and your grace that has extended to countries, Lord, that we know that you want to bring those countries to yourself so that the, even the Jews will be uh, uh, provoked to jealousy. Lord, I pray for, the, for, for, the, for Israel and Jews, but also we all, I, I pray for the enemies. I pray for the salvation. I thank you for that your spirit is moving in the Middle East. Even through suffering, you are bringing Muslims to yourself. I bless chosen people and what they're doing and bless this conference in Jesus' name. Amen.